Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm showing you a day in my life as a process engineer in the pharmaceutical industry. This video ended up being a lot longer than I intended it to be, so feel free to look at the timestamps in the description and skip around to whichever sections you're interested in. So my working hours are 8am to 5pm and this is my schedule for today. I have two meetings in the morning and another one in the afternoon. This was filmed on a Monday and Mondays are usually the most hectic work days for me. Monday blues, am I right? <laughs> but that aside, there's also that preparation that goes into recapping what went on the last week and what work I need to get done for the week ahead. I usually set aside some time in the morning before I start my work day to figure out my top three things that I need to get done for the day and that helps me set the tone for what I need to accomplish that day. Okay, so I just got done with two meetings. One was an internal team meeting and another one was a one-to-one -one with my manager. So team meetings are a staple in the pharmaceutical industry. There's no way you can escape from them. There are different tiers of team meetings that happen. One of it is an internal team meeting like the one that I just had where team members get together and they share updates about the projects that they're working on, whether it's on track to meet the deadlines, if there are any support required, and also if we have other deliverables that we can committed to that impact process, whether we're on track to meeting those. These are the types of discussions that happen in team meetings. And the next level after that would be cross-functional team meetings. So cross-functional team meetings is when representatives from different departments like quality, engineering, manufacturing, process development, maintenance, safety department. So representatives from all of these different teams will get together and discuss on the following. Firstly, if the process is on track, whatever process is running, whether batch pack out schedule is on track, whether there are any ongoing investigations or action closure that is required. If a recap of what went on the previous day, whether it was um, on track. I keep using on track a lot, but these are words that usually come up in the meetings as well. Whether is it on track, whether there's any delay expected. So this is just a very quick meeting. Usually it doesn't take more than 30 minutes. The internal team meeting as well as the cross-functional meetings. So it's just a very quick update on what happened the day before and what we can expect for the next couple of days. So if there's any support required, for example, as a process engineer, I'm from the manufacturing department. Let's say I need support from quality to help me close out one of my actions. This could be one of the platform for you to highlight and tell the quality member attending that meeting like hey I need help from the XXX could you bring it back to your team and let them know that I need this support or something like that and so the next tier after these cross-functional meetings will be a meeting that happens with all of the directors and the site leader so this is very similar to the cross-functional meeting but except there'll be directors from the different departments so instead of for example like process engineer from manufacturing or a quality associate from the quality team it would instead be like the manufacturing director the quality engineering directors all of the different directors coming together and discussing with the site leader on a more big picture scale because in these cross-functional meetings we're talking about the nitty-gritty details talking about the day-to-day -day progress but in the director level meetings they'll be talking about for example like are we meeting the supply that we committed to are we in track for like the next few months it's a more picture discussion that happens so meetings are very structured in that sense you can see that there's an escalation platform so it starts with your own team then you go into the cross-functional and then with the directors and the site leaders so if any information needs to be passed down so the directors will bring it back to the team or the cross-functional huddle and if anything needs to be escalated it goes up so yeah team meetings are very structured in the pharmaceutical industry i don't want to go into too much details but i'm just explaining in a very broad sense what's being discussed but actually there's a very structured format to which the meetings are conducted we'll go from like safety to delivery engagement it's a very established way of running meetings i've worked in two companies so far and the way the meetings are run is very similar. There's this thing called operational excellence. You'd be familiar if you're in this industry. So operational excellence kind of sets the tone for what's being discussed in the meetings. So people in these team, their scope of work revolves around optimizing the way we do things and one of the pillars under that is the way we run meetings. It's very structured. It's right from our internal team meetings to the cross-functional meetings to like the director level meetings, all of them, the structure for which the meeting runs is pretty much the same. Yeah, it's a very structured... <laughs> I have a bit of time before my next meeting at 1, so I'm just gonna finish up on some work and get my lunch. Two hours later.
much, much, much later. So I had that check-in meeting with my colleague. That went well. We were discussing about one of the projects that I'm working on, which is updating batch records. So batch records are the document used by technicians on the floor to execute uh, manufacturing instructions. So it tells you what's the volume you need to charge into the reactor, what you need to do like step by step. It outlines everything that needs to be done on the manufacturing floor. So the project that I'm working on is improving some of these instructions and determining if some of these uh, instructions could be removed to further optimize the process. This is a continuous improvement project that I'm working on. So my colleague and I had a discussion about some of the changes that we're making to these batch records. So yeah, that was done. Uh, then I continued working on some other stuff. So this is a tip if you're working from home. This is a bit extra, but I have two desks. One, uh, which is the desk that you saw earlier, that's where I do most of my work. And I also have this standing desk. This standing desk comes in really handy when I need a change of environment or I've just been sitting down for way too long. You can probably relate to this if you're also working from home. If I don't go out for the day and I'm working from home, I pretty much end up sitting the whole day. It's really bad. So this standing desk gives me a change of environment and lets me move around a bit. If I'm on the site, I don't even have this problem. You're in and out of the plant, you're talking to different colleagues, you're moving around the building. I'm just more active when I'm on site, but at home it's really difficult. So this helps me out. So this is the standing desk that I'm using. This is um, a desk that you have to adjust manually. So there are knobs over here for you to adjust the height. This is the maximum height that it goes to and it, it goes down all the way to a sitting adjustment as well. This particular panel, you can also rotate it. If you just want to have your laptop, it's very convenient to use that as well. And because this is a manually adjusted one, I only paid about 35 Singapore dollars for this and I really like it. Oh, and did I mention this also has wheels? So you can just roll it around, work from anywhere, your living room, your bedroom, wherever. So yeah, really convenient and has really helped improve my work from home productivity. really good. So welcome to the Q&A segment of this video. Just a note, nobody sent in these questions. Nobody even knows I'm filming this video. These are just questions that I would personally want to know if I'm interested in being a process engineer. Is it typical for process engineers to work from home? No, it's all thanks to COVID-19 that I'm on a work from home setup. This is my second job in my first job, even at the height of the pandemic, I was still on site every single day. So it really depends on which company you're in and what working arrangement the company has for you. What is the job scope or responsibility of a process engineer? To get a better understanding of what a process engineer does, it's important to know what the org chart in a pharmaceutical company looks like. So I'll insert a picture here. There are like four main branches, four main departments. There's process development, quality, under quality, there's quality assurance and there's also quality control. Then there's manufacturing, it's also called production. The last one is engineering. These four branches, the process engineer role falls under the manufacturing department. Now talking about the responsibilities of a process engineer. So typically a process engineer is the lead for a process campaign from start to end. So anything from like process startup, making sure that the process is running smoothly at the end, then ensuring all the pack out and the completion of the campaign. All of this falls under the responsibility of a process engineer. So while the campaign is running, there are additional responsibilities as well. So you are also as a process engineer in charge 
charge of the batch records I mentioned earlier batch records are like the instructions for the technicians on the floor to execute so you'll be managing those you'll be the one drafting not alone there'll be other stakeholders helping you with that as well but you'll be the main one leading that and then you're also in charge of like troubleshooting the process again you'll work with different stakeholders from like process development quality to troubleshoot the issue you would also be managing like investigations and deviations for example uh, maybe a foreign particle was discovered in one of the product during one of the process steps then you would be doing the investigation as to where the foreign particle came from what is the impact to the process what preventive and corrective actions you can take to ensure that this doesn't happen again all these kind of deviations also falls under the responsibility of a process engineer so basically you're doing a lot of proactive monitoring another thing I want to highlight is the difference between technicians and biotechnologists versus process engineers there's this misconception that process engineers are also running the process that's not true while we are the ones proactively monitoring the process we're not allowed to operate any equipment we're not allowed to charge any equipment to the reactors all of this is not done by process engineers these are done by technicians and biotechnologists they are the ones that are heavily involved they are hands-on in the plant operating the equipment they're using the Delta V software for example but they are the one making all the changes the process engineer is more so the monitoring aspect of the whole uh, equation and in, in addition to all the responsibilities that I just mentioned you will also be involved in audits so depending on which countries your company is selling the products to those countries will come to audit your firm to ensure that you're complying to all the different regulations and GMP practices so for example in America there will be FDA and in Singapore it's HSA the next question, what qualifications do you need to be a process engineer? Generally, if you look at a lot of the job descriptions, they would require you to have a degree in chemical engineering, engineering, life sciences or anything science or engineering related, you have a really good chance of getting in. What is the career progress like as a process engineer? Usually you start out as a process engineer. I have seen some companies advertise junior process engineer roles, but I don't think those are that common usually it's process engineer and then a senior process engineer you move on to become the process manager and then senior process manager director and site leader so this is what the progression looks like as you progress along your career you don't only have to stick to process engineering there's also different branch out there's also different departments that you could transfer to for example project engineering is one project engineer and process engineer the job scope is really different project engineers manage projects for example like qualification projects when you bring a new reactor into the plant they do the qualification the validation working with vendors to get all the specifications right all of that is done by a project engineer a process engineer focuses more on the process the problems with the process making sure that it runs smoothly yeah so difference project versus process so but project engineer is a role that you could also explore you could also explore food manufacturing so these are all avenues that you can still go into as a process engineer this is not really a question but just a point that i wanted to bring across there is a difference between api and biologics manufacturing api refers to small molecule drugs things like your panadol tablet these falls under api manufacturing biologics refers to like vaccines your covid 19 vaccines, all of these fall under biologics. Depending on which company you work with, API or biologics, the role of a process engineer will be slightly different because the process requirements are different. The way the process is being carried out is also different because one is a tablet, one is the therapeutic. Process engineer role is going to vary slightly. So yeah, just something to take note of. Those are all the questions that I came up with. If there's anything else that you guys want to know that I didn't uh, mention in the video or you're curious about, just leave a comment below and I will answer your question to the best of my ability. I hope you guys found this video interesting. This is just uh, my take on what it's like being a process engineer and how it's like working from home. I do miss being on site. Uh, it's really fun going into the plant.